this woman without, who had never gone to school one day in her life with $2,500, she built a business which she <clears throat> sold to me for $60 million approximately. But because you spend so much time dreaming, thinking, and planning for this giant thing, you never actually do anything. You make a decision and you're like, I know this is gonna be difficult. I know it's not uh, gonna be the easiest thing in the world, but I'm determined to do it. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. What's up, Believe Nation, it's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see exploded onto the world. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message. Be determined to succeed. Over to you, Warren Buffett. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. I would like to tell you of two women uh, that each sold a business to Berkshire Hathaway, uh, to me actually, for many, many, many millions of dollars. Both of them started with $2,500. By a coincidence, it was the exact same amount. It was everything they had in the world. And one of them was a woman who landed in Seattle in 1917, couldn't speak a word of English, had a tag around her neck. The tag said, uh, Fort Dodge, Iowa, the Red Cross, got her to Fort Dodge, where she was reunited with her husband, who had come to the country a couple of years earlier. And she lived in Fort Dodge for two years, and as she put it, she felt like a dummy. She couldn't pick up the language. She couldn't learn a word. And so she decided, she and her husband decided to move to Omaha. So they came to Omaha in 1919, and there she found a small colony of Russian Jews, so she started feeling more at home. And then as her oldest daughter went to school, she would come home, this daughter, Frances, and she would teach her mother the words she learned in school that day. And this woman, Rose Blumpkin, spent 20 years saving money, bringing first her siblings over, her mother and father, $50 at a time. She sold used clothing to do it. She had four children during this period. And by 1937, after 20 years, she'd saved $2,500. She went to Chicago and she bought what she could of furniture. Her dream had always been to open a furniture store. And this woman without, who had never gone to school one day in her life with $2,500, but with the same spirit that the people in this room had about having a dream and working to accomplish that dream, she built a business which she <clears throat> sold to me in 1983 for $60 million approximately, and which, which did a billion and a half dollars worth of business last year. <clears throat> the fourth generation is working in that business. This woman, Rose Blumpkin, lived, well, she, she worked for me until she was 103. And then she, I'm not, then, then she retired and she died the next year, which is a lesson to all of Berkshire's managers that <laughs> premature retirement, you know, not, you can't tell what's going to happen. But Mrs. B, with her $2,500, one further fact about her, she could not read or write. And she went into a furniture business, and she didn't bring anything in unique in furniture, but she br brought a determination to succeed. She knew she could outwork anyone else. She knew that she cared about her customers. She worked at very low gross margins, but she built this incredible business. Determination is a game. Whoever you look up to, whichever athlete, entrepreneur, musician, whoever it is that you look up to, study their story and you'll see that it's one of determination. That it didn't just get handed to them, that they worked and they worked and they worked and they worked and they failed and they sucked and eventually they won. And so I think what happens to a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people who are just getting started, is they try it, 
they taste it, it doesn't work, you create something that's not good, maybe you invest some dollars into it, it doesn't work out, and because it didn't work out that first time, you throw in the towel, and you're never gonna get, take your shot again. That's what most people do. And so, the two things that come to mind around this topic is one, whenever you get some big idea, something you wanna do, just start. Find the smallest possible, silliest, stupidest, smallest way to just start. A lot of times, we get these ideas and then we make them big, which is what we love doing as entrepreneurs, right? We're visionaries, we're dreamers, we wanna make something really big. How can I make this thing explode? And then you make this thing so big in your mind that you never do anything about it, right? If you wanna start a YouTube channel, I had a, I had a fan, Yoko, come in earlier today, she wants to start a YouTube channel, great. So to do that, you need to have gear and you need to have uh, lights and what camera should I have and what microphone should I use and it just keeps building and building and building becomes this impossible thing that you need tons of money before you ever launch and that's it's great to think of it from a motivating point of view of where your channel could go but because you spend so much time dreaming thinking and planning for this giant thing you never actually do anything if you want to start a YouTube channel pull out your phone and just start filming I'll still film some of my videos off my phone last month I didn't have Jason my awesome cameraman, I was uh, traveling, uh, I was on a cruise, I was seasick, and I'm still filming off of my phone, and the videos are still doing well, you know? And so if I could do it on my channel with 1.2 million subscribers, you could do it on your channel. And so break that down into whatever situation you're facing, because YouTube may not be your game, just find the smallest way to start. Find the smallest way to start. Yes, have a big dream that's gonna motivate you and inspire you, and find the smallest way to get started right now. As soon as you get any kind of goal or vision for yourself, then today something has to happen. Action has to happen beyond just planning, action. You wanna start a YouTube channel? Make a video today. Go with your phone, make a video today. It might take you the whole day, but make that video. The second part of it is expect your work at the beginning to suck. Expect it not to work out. Like my videos at the beginning, I had no comments on. I had no feedback, I had no traction. Whenever you learn anything, you suck. Whatever the first thing is that you are trying to learn, you're trying to learn language, you're trying to learn how to make coffee, you're trying to learn how to make a video, anything, you suck at it. To start, you suck. Any skill that you've ever learned, you sucked at the beginning. Your first project was a disaster. And yet you expect this business idea of yours to just work out the first time you try something. It won't. So yes, have a big goal. Yes, have a big vision. And find a way to start small and then expect to suck. Expect that first project to not go well, to be a total embarrassment, especially if you know what looks good and you know you can't do it. Expect it to be a total embarrassment. But the win for you is not in creating a quality product. The win is getting started. The win is doing something about it. The win is building some kind of momentum. And then tomorrow doing it again, and doing it again, and doing it again. And every day, making it a little bit better. And so yes, you could aspire to be like the people that you look up to and use that as a kick forward to say, I'm not good enough yet, I wanna get better, I wanna get stronger, I wanna be the best, I need to drive forward, I need to improve myself. But use that as a kick forward, not down. Because if you look at the people who are the best and say, I can never do that, that's when you start to lose. So use them as a source of inspiration to go forward. And then, just try to be better than you were yesterday. Like the video you made today, or the project you made today, or whatever you're working on, whatever skill you're trying to master, you did better today than you did yesterday, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before and that's ultimately how you win. It's the story of every single successful person. If you don't believe me, go and look up whoever it is that you look up to, the masters in your field, and study their history, study how they got started, study how much determination and passion and hard work went into it, study how much they did on a daily basis, not starting and stopping and starting and stopping every single day, and four years later, they became a success. That's the kind of attitude you need to take. I like to say that you have to be patient and impatient but I think people have it messed up. I think you need to be patient in the long term. I think you need to have patience for where you're going and understand it's gonna take a lot of time and be impatient in the day to day. Be impatient in like this video that I'm making, I want it to be the best video possible. I want it to be the best version of what I can do given my current skills and abilities and resources right now. This needs to be the best version. So I'm impatient on the daily, but patient knowing that for me to hit my next goal, it's gonna take more years. Like for me to accomplish my mission, it's, it's a lifetime thing or most people have it flipped. Most people are impatient on a long term. Like they need everything to happen right away. They need their big goal to happen tomorrow or they're not happy. And they're so patient with themselves on a daily basis. 
they skate by, like they make a video, they make a little project and they're not hard enough on themselves. So I think you need that balance of patience and impatience, but you need to flip the way you're thinking about it right now. You need to stay determined, you need to stay focused because that's ultimately how you win. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that is Timo approved coming up next. But before that, I wanna know, what is your favorite story of determination? What story inspires you, motivates you? I want you to share it down in the comments below because I think it could also help inspire the other people watching and maybe even give me some ideas for new videos to make. So thank you guys so much for watching. Put it in the comments below. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of espresso and enjoy the bonus clip. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. It's just like anything you're gonna do, you know, when I wanted to become an actor and start making movies, it was the same kind of determination, the same kind of thing where you're like, you make a decision and you're like, I know this is gonna be difficult, I know it's not uh, gonna be the easiest thing in the world, but I'm determined to do it and I really care, I'm really caring about this decision. <clears throat> so you just make it a priority and, and you know, uh, when anyone's starting out in any business or any sort of life endeavor or any sort of relationship, you're, you're, you're starting out with the intention to go all the way. And to me, it was just a decision and I just made a commitment to sticking to it. You must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor you're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. And once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. If it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metro Metropolitan Opera. And sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the host of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. But be the best little scrub on the side of the rill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.